Hello everybody and welcome back to Spellweaver. Oh my god. One can't leave for a month for a, for a week without the game being flipped upside down. And it's happening again. It's like I, I just I just came back home like yesterday and and literally this this thing happening. Balance changes, everything is going down the hole and and oh my god I am, I am so annoyed uh, we have to discuss it because it's relevant on a few different levels of relevance but I I, I was kind of thinking like before that uh, I'm not sure whether it's a good idea whether I really want to do it or not and most importantly I don't know if uh, you would like to watch it and what I'm talking about is I was thinking about maybe making something like um, quick express news flash format that I would just be popping like a very quick very brief uh, videos of say I don't know well like like 10 minutes long or, or five five to ten minutes long where I would be just making a quick coverage of the um, Spellweaver related news because like honestly I, I, I find myself uh, in Spellweaver and on Spellweaver forums like well technically in the, in the past couple of months I think I was pretty much in game or at least on the forums pretty much every day provided I was home I mean, if, if I was somewhere away, uh, it's uh, pretty obvious I was not there. But if, if I am if I am present, then I'm pretty much stalking the forums all the time, or, or I'm doing something in-game. So, I was, I was thinking maybe if you were interested in this sort of format with, with quick news and, and updates regarding stuff, because I was thinking, but then then something like that come, came to my mind, like... Yeah, but honestly, how many people watching these videos are people who are themselves actively engaged in the community? Now, uh, frankly, I have no idea. I cannot really tell. It's like YouTube is not linking me uh, usernames of people who watch the videos. <laughs> that would be, that would be uh, sort of helpful. Although, you know, still going by uh, YouTube statistics regarding the views, to my surprise, um, I mean, not, not that much to my surprise, but um, all, all I can tell from the, um, from the YouTube provided statistics that even though there are some people who can come to my videos from the Spellweaver forums, uh, majority is not. So... Yeah, again, I cannot tell. A, a lot of views I'm having are from the um, from YouTube itself. Um, yeah, either from from the people's um, subscription feeds or or the um, or the uh, like like recommended videos or, or stuff like that. So I cannot really tell how many of these people are people who are actively uh, partaking in the Spellweavers community life over at the forums and who are technically up to date with the news through that channel. Uh, <clears throat> Spellweaver, uh, uh, Reddit accounts to a lot of uh, views, which I am kind of surprised because honestly, uh, it's like every time I look at the Spellweavers uh, Reddit, it seems like totally dead and abandoned. Well, except the few days I was away when suddenly like all these posts came up. But, well, they were kind of related to the fact that we had all these things happening that are happening. <clears throat> so, yeah, in short, I cannot really tell. How many of you are up to date with the with the forums and the news that show up on the forums, and how many of you would be willing to see this as a quick, flashy format with some information on the <clears throat> on the new quick stuff that happens? So if if you would be interested in seeing something like that, you see, uh, 
very, very, very quick, very flash uh, videos, just just going briefly over the news in the um, in the community and forums. Yeah, as I said, like five to ten minutes tops. I don't think I would li like to go any anywhere uh, further with that. Yeah, and th that this will go like spontaneous when something happens, not on a, any sort of schedule. So if you'd like to see something like that, leave a comment and let me know about it. If if you have any any certain suggestions about this format, I would also appreciate those. You know, it's like all in all, it's like I'm not doing those videos for myself. I'm doing the, them for you, and it's not like. I don't watch my videos because sometimes I do, but that's a that's a whole different story. Let's get to the important stuff because balance changes, of course. Of course, I left. Then everything is gotta get changed. Okay. Now, what have changed? Uh, not much, really. We got a uh, flash um, rework to six cards that. <clears throat> Devs, based on community feedback, deemed uh, nerf-worthy. Which, which is like, these are the cards <clears throat> in, in question, and first of all, let me start that, in my opinion, that was a bad approach, because all these cards were nerfed. And, yeah, while it is important that cards like Totally Overpowered Temple Guard got nerfed, Although it doesn't change him, like, almost at all. Um, the more important thing is that... No, wait, I, I lost the track of what I was saying again. Uh, what I was trying to say, that it's good that problematic cards are being changed, but in my opinion, more important than nerfing the overpower cards would be buffing the cards that are currently unplayed at all. Which is kind of a second thing we will discuss, you know, in a second. Which apparently came through, uh, once again, community voice. What else? It was actually uh, Vitamin C who said under the uh, post where Ifco said that the changes are being made, etc, etc. Vitamin C came up and, and he said that he would love to see the cards that are uh, not played reworked into something usable. And that he'd like to start with Vegetation Blockade. Or or not that he would like to start with Vegetation Blockade, but he used the Vegetation Blockade as an example. Which again made me insanely mad, but that's uh, we'll get to this in a second. Uh, then in the end of the day, we got a You Fix the Card contest, where um, devs want us, the community... To drop some feedback on how we would like to see the new vegetation blockade work. Although, yeah, they are making it rather than a simple uh, rework that card. They are going into more of a custom card contest. Where you're actually getting like the uh, permanent overhaul possibilities. With, you know, changes to everything possible. Literally everything possible. So, some some ideas on how the new vegetation blockade should be are, are like the changes that were made to um, Suffocate. I'm trying to... Uh, suffocate was called Noxious Fumes before and was doing something totally different as far as... No, wait. Noxious Fumes is the weak, uh, the weak card, isn't it? Well, I'm pretty sure that um, Suffocate was called something totally different before. And it worked totally different, but it got the name changed, and the whole way it works changed. But the picture remained the same. And the idea with um, New Vegetation Blockade is pretty similar. And see, Tombs of the Denter are flashing in violet that they are to be um, edited. Yep. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, that happens. So yeah, some ideas are really going this way, which you know it has its pros, it has its cons. Uh, let me let me get over the uh, balance changes that were made. First of all, we had the temple guard. That the only change made to the temple guard was that it was reduced 
to one less speed. I mean, if it was reduced to one speed, it used to be two speed. Uh, honestly, I don't really think it's that much of a change. Okay, let's let's make it clear. Speed in Spellweaver is pretty huge. It is a very important um, statistic of each creature, and you know, one speed either way can make a whole world lot of difference. But the problem with Temple Guard was never that it was too fast. The problem with Temple Guard was that it was basically indestructible. You either use this, use it to wipe the board of a creatures because with three attack and be, uh, being um, turned to drop, it's uh, you know it can it can waste pretty much any other comparable creature. Uh, no, I don't think we can easily quick search for that because of course there is no uh, mana mana searching there is no level searching we would have to go around it i'm too lazy to do it i would have to like go and and, and pop all the relevant cards to favorites like i did with those but that's definitely not going to happen now um so the problem with Temple Guard was that you basically spammed the uh, Might Emblems onto it and in the um, Diogen um, Valor Might Emblem heavy meta that we have right now, it's really easy to spam this guy with Might Emblems and if he is spammed with Might Emblems, he basically turns them all into Shield Emblems and he's indestructible. He's dealing damage to your face, he's blocking your creatures, he's attacking your, your creatures, you're basically doomed and you cannot get rid of that thing because it's protected. Pure insanity. Now, what they changed is that it's uh, only one speed. So, it will either A, block the weakest creatures, or B, kill the weakest creatures, or actually the C, the most probable thing that will happen to the Temple Guards right now, they will become Phase Busters, okay? Because with no other choices, you would be just tossing them into your opponent's face. And with 3 attack, your opponent's choices would either be to A, waste their creatures to block the Temple Guard and block the insane amount of phase damage that it delivers, or the second option, uh, whatever, uh, yeah, I, I got a text. Or a second option, let the phase damage happen and keep your creatures, but then you will be really, really falling behind uh, in health. So unless you're playing some very powerful variant of OTH deck that can really heal you from 1 to 40 in one turn, you can risk it. Otherwise, you're pretty... So I don't really think that Temple Guard was fixed in any way. That's that's my take in on 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 Temple Guard, because okay, it now cannot wipe your board directly. It will wipe your board indirectly through blocks, and it is still indestructible as it was because it will have a crap load of emblems of of shield emblems, might and uh, shield emblems, six hundred might emblems. And it's still protected, you still cannot use your um, hero powers or spells to get rid of it. Sucks. Darius Stormborn. Well, in case of Darius, the only change that was made is was... Um, his ability cooldown was increased to 4 turns, and... well... I don't really think it hurts Darius that much. His ability is still awfully powerful. And it doesn't really harm the decks that were using this ability that much. One turn difference could mean uh, a world of... of, 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 of uh, um, w w one turn could make a whole world world of difference, but... Um, keeping in mind, it's a, it's an expensive skill, it requires a lot of levels, so it's not like you are changing the, um, 
uh, amounts the skill was used in a 12 turn game from 4 to 3, okay? That's not that drastic. Because if you are having a game enough, uh, a, a game long enough, where Darius will be multiply, will be using his skills multiple times. I mean, you need at least seven, uh, three levels plus three mana. Sorry, you need at least six turns in game before you, he can start using this ability. So it already has to be a long game. Although let's let's face it, he can still be used very powerfully with in conjunction with stuff like um, the 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 the, the um, snowstorm and and you know flash freezes, power discharges. All those cards still remain in a good synergy with Daris. So it's it's decent. I mean, he was overpowered. In my opinion, he is still kind of a, an over. Oh no, wait, no, not overpowered. He was not overpowered, and he is not overpowered. But he was very powerful, and he is still very powerful. That's one thing that didn't change about him. Now, Moonlight Patrol. Oh my God! This is yet another thing that really annoys me. With the changes, yeah, because it's my deck that I haven't even built yet. I will get to it in a second. Um, so what's the deal with Moonlight Patrol? Let's face it, Moonlight Patrol was an insanely powerful and insanely popular card. Um, mostly present in the um, Hermillion Green decks. And it was really a huge thing in deck like that. They are a pretty early drop. Um, they are flying, which protects them from a lot of uh, potential phase damage. And most importantly, they have their um, energy ability that increases their health and attack by one. For one turn, okay. But for mere one um, energy. They do not gain energy on their own, so you have to restore their energy using like some sort of third-party um, solutions. Although the Glitis, or whatever is her name, yeah, there is this. Uh... Yeah, Glitis the Enhanced, Enchanted. Sorry, my bad. I cannot read. No, wait, it's. You can use less energy to pay the mana and energy cost of... Yep. Ooh, and she can gain energy. I was not aware of that. So, yeah, she can be used to, to get these guys a little bit more attack. Um, I think there were some other ways. Well, you could use the... Um, Other creatures you control gain one, so that's a thing. Um, you can use, yeah, you can use Central Illusionist to uh, take them back and then play them for free, and this way restore their energy. There is also the uh, sh Skill Shrine. Is it Enchanted Spring? Yeah, Enchanted Spring. You can use to bring your um fairies without energy back to hand and reuse them with the energy so that that wasn't really a problem they were really powerful card and now with one less speed because they used to have three speed now they have only two speed well they are losing a lot okay now they become more blockable than they were before because the creatures with a speed of three or more were rare before and with that change, they are becoming even more rare, which kind of sucks. Although, yeah, it's like at this point, increasing the uh, high speed creatures makes it only more difficult for non-speedy decks to deal with the speedy decks. Well, there is of course always Hands From Beyond that you could use if you are playing Corruption, but that's only like one card. There isn't that many cards to fiddle with your opponent's creature's speed, so... 
Uh, I guess it's sort of reasonable, although I really think it hurts fairies a lot. And as far as I remember, many people were also complaining about fairies being weakened way too much. And not even the Moonlight Patrol itself, but the fairies in general. All fairies in the game. And let's be honest, I was investigating it like before. Wait. Um. Oh, it's F A E. Um. Yeah, the fairies were pretty weak already, and there is not much you can do with fairies, etc., etc. I was investigating it. Yeah, I, I, I will say that because I was really thinking about some decks, and I was really investigating fairies as a deck idea, and I gave it up because fairies themselves were nothing special. You cannot really work that much with the fairies, and and you know with the nerf to Moonlight Patrol, they are going even further behind, and it really sucks, it really makes me sad, because if I were to make, um, if I were to choose the weakest, lamest um, aspect right now, it will be nature. So, sorry nature fans, but that's what it is. In my opinion, if you were to build a mono deck, Nature is the most screwed one out of all the uh, aspects. Every other aspect could have some possibility to make it a decent or at least usable mono deck, except Moonlight Patrol. And you'll see it in a second, but um, yeah, except the nature. And we can Moonlight Patrol. I don't know, you know, if if you really wanted to nerf cards from nature, because that's what they were going for. They wanted to um, address one card from each um, from each color, from each aspect, and and do something reasonable with this. Um, I don't know. I mean, all these cards are so lame, so useless. I guess, like, the only potential nerfs in the, uh, in the nature aspect, if we're not counting the dual levels, because I don't want to count them here. This is why I don't count the Diogen as, as a good um, nature card, because if we would count the double levels, then probably Diogen is the best nature card available in the game. Okay, but he's not pure nature. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe something along the lines of I don't know. I've seen some people complain about Haldiri being a little bit too overpowered. Uh she's powerful, but at the same time she's pretty expensive, so I think that's justified. I'm not really sure if you would have her um, rarity changed. I don't really know how it affects the limited because this is um, this is like where the uh, rarities play the most is with limited. I d I don't know really. I mean, nature is so lame, so useless. <sighs> so if we're going for a straight nerf, I don't really think I see any card that should be nerfed. Maybe Jungle Death Trap. You know what, honestly, cutting on Jungle Death Trap's um, attack and health would be sort of reasonable. I mean, let's, let's face it, Jungle Death Trap's um, place in the game is not being a creature itself, it's more about a creature block, forcing your opponent to play something that will get discarded, thus removing the death trap, okay? So, you know, I, I, I would love to see jungle death trap with something like can't attack. 
or just just less uh, less attack on it. Because what is important with jungle death trap is that it has a lot of health. Because if it doesn't, then a player might want to play around it and try to use the creatures they already have in play, kill the death trap if death trap war was lower on health, and then play what they wanted to play. Now, if we would put something like cannot attack on jungle death trap, that would solve like all the problems with this card because this card right now it is awfully powerful and it's mostly awfully powerful because it's insanely easy with something like basic Nivas ability. This is the basic one. With basic Nivas ability to make this beast swift, this plant, this beast of a plant swift, play it and go for very quick, very painful 4 phase damage in your opponent. And provided you can play like 2 at once, because they are not that expensive, look they are only 2 per piece. So you can like play 2 of those and use the Niva ability for mere 5, da um, five mana. Considering that you need only 1 nature for... Um, for Niva's ability, and you need only one nature level for jungle death trap. You know, they can quickly and cheaply snowball into a lot of phase damage out of nowhere. And that's a problem. This is bad, of course they are not meant to be card level. Oh, because, yeah, uh, with level 2 or less. Um, of course, it's 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 uh, not a problem because it's most commonly used to just block your opponent's uh, drops, and this is the way it should be used. But if someone is using it to deal insane amounts of quick phase damage, it is quite problematic. <sighs> I don't know, really. I I don't see nature as something needing a nerf, really. And it's good that the Veggie Blockade is being turned into something more useful. Although talking about Veggie Blockade, like... I could make like an entire episode, an hour long episode, just talking about the Veggie Blockade itself. What is wrong with this card right now? How could it be fixed? In the ways that this card is not changed, but makes more sense. And discussing all the ideas that... <laughs> even, even without discussing all the ideas people had about this card in the forums, that could easily be like a, at least half an hour of me talking about this one specific card, because this card is huge. This card is huge, except it's not executed properly. Uh, let me get back, oh, if I'm already at it, I will say this. And I think someone already said this on the forums in the uh, Veggie Blockade topic. The best thing to do with the Veggie Blockade is that non-flying creatures can't attack, period. Not some pain bullshit, they cannot attack, period. And that changes this thing so hugely. Or maybe even better, non-flying creatures cannot attack and block. That's it. Then, of course, there is this problem that Veggie Blockade works only for one turn. And then draws you a card, which is a nice boost, although I don't really think that it's that necessary. I would rather see Veggie Blockade stay in play for a little bit longer, although I was I was personally thinking about it even more. People were also, like, talking BS about this, that, uh, you know, Veggie Blockade should stay for a certain amount of time in play. But there is no consensus how we should decide how long it will stay. People are really trying to push some sort of the energy ideas forward. I don't really think it's that good of an idea. People were pushing like the uh, weakness emblems idea and oh my god. Yeah, weakness emblems on nature. This is, this is dumb, but whatever. I mean, people were making it um, kind of justified why they want to... Uh, put it the uh, weakness and it's like yeah it's like you have to work your way through the uh, through the thick vegetation and it's like you know all the all the branches and thorns and spikes and all the unpleasant uh, plant thingies they 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 like scratch you and and hurt you and and pain you and 
Uh, and and when you're moving across all the all of those, you you take some damage. You are getting weaker, and you know because you're losing energy, etc. So it makes kind of sense. Uh, yeah, but it's 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 this problem of putting mechanics that should stay in one place into totally different place. It's like you you know. I could understand weakness emblems on pretty much anything evil because they make sense. Even though the weakness emblems in uh, the current implementation of weakness emblems in tombs uh, in uh, corruption is kind of weird. Uh, they are mostly the um, Dominions thing and they work good as they are in Dominion. They really fit well in, in the whole Dominion thing and stuff. but. Whatever, let me finish with those cards. Forced labor. Forced labor being changed to 4 mana cost. Which uh, slows it down a little bit, but it's still insane amount of value. Like, keep in mind, you're essentially getting like 6 mana out of it, because 1 Tortured Orc would be 6 mana. Uh, 1 Tortured Orc would be like 2 mana, and you're getting 3 of those guys. They are one of the most powerful slaves in the game. And definitely the most powerful level 1 slaves. Actually, if we get to all the slaves... Slave... Yeah, the only cards that are slaved that can really, you know, uh, compare with Tortured Orcs are other Ogre Captive, or Raging Minotaur, because Jackfree is not a slave, is it? No, it is not. Because, you know, Slave Gladiator, Enchained Soul, Moonsteel Miner, what are these? These are, these are meh, these are nothing, these are weak. Yeah, so this is definitely the strongest uh, level 1 uh, slave card. Can be easily deslavified with some damage. And let's face it, with 2 3 and 2 speed, really powerful. They can be really annoying because you know you can get a lot of board presence with them. Then you know, working with something like Jackery or um, Champion of the Revolt, you can deslavify them. Or working with something like Basic Alexa, Guards Guards, you will be spamming the weak non slave cards. That will deslavify it. So this is decent. This is kind of balancing it without totally ruining it. So similar like with the Daris. So in, in short, what have we had so far? We have weakening that really didn't weaken the card at all in my opinion. We had a nice balancing. Weakening that ruined the pretty decent card that I don't really think was that much of a problem. That was definitely the strongest, um, the strongest purely nature card before the nerf. Now it is, uh, now it is just average. And le let's admit it, it was never highly above average overall in the game. It hurts Hermelion Green definitely, but it really hurts all the green decks. Because green decks, they had so little choices already, and now they have even less. So bad, good, bad, good. <laughs> and guess what will I say about Mistress of Shadows? Spoiler alert, bad. And this is something that I meant to do like instantly after learning that Mistress of Shadows was nerfed the way she was nerfed. I was like, okay, I'm opening my... I'm opening up all my decks and removing all Mistresses of Shadows from them. Period. Why is that? Because I used Mistress of Shadows mainly for the fact that she used to be a card draw. Now, the only change they made to the Mistress of Shadows, the cost remains the same, the levels remain the same, the statistics remain the same, but she doesn't draw a card anymore. And as I said, I only used her for the sake of drawing cards. Now, without the card draw, she's useless to me. Although, luckily, I don't have that much decks using her. I have, like, one or two decks using Mistress of Shadows. 
Uh, yeah, it's basically ruining a perfectly good card. She was powerful, okay, but the problem was not in a card draw. She remains powerful as she is right now, and to annoy your opponent, to empty their side of the board, to gain some board control that you wouldn't have without her, etc, etc, she still does all of these things as she used to do. The only thing that changed is that playing her and then like fireballing her or using any other way to instantly destroy her before your opponent gets the 1-3 attack with her. You know, it's 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, uh, unintentional joke. Before your opponent gets the 1-3-3 uh, three, three attack, attack with her. Yeah, it basically makes it more pointless because then at least she used to give you a card and now she won't do that, so you're just you're just dropping it, you're letting your opponent do whatever they want with it, you take back control of it, you hope that you have nothing with two attack or less, so you won't lose anything and you get a nice 3-3 three, three body, and then you can like play more of those 3-3 three, three bodies forever. Pretty dumb, if you ask me. I would really think about making some uh, either stat changes or um, the rest of her abilities changed rather than the card draw, because card draw was, in my opinion, the only good thing about this card. I mean, it was good for me, now it is not. And one last thing, which... Honestly, I kinda agree with, although it makes me sad because it makes my, my tombs weaker. And this is really the card I love. Out of all the cards in the game, I think the Tombs of the Damned is the card I love the most. <laughs> but it's it's gone now, so... Well, it's, it's not gone. Honestly, this is a decent balancing debuff that makes a lot of sense, because now... When Tombs of the Damned leaves the field, they won't spawn you another Legioner. So a situation where you would play Tombs and your opponent would remove them, you would get like two free zombies are no longer happening. The case where you would play Tombs on top of a Tombs and you would get like three free zombies are not happening anymore. Yeah, and it's a pretty decent, pretty legit balance thing. That, you know, even though it makes my favorite card weaker, I do agree with it because it makes sense. It makes it weaker, but it makes me makes it more balanced. So that's basically what all we had. Bad, good, bad, good, bad, good. With that in mind, let me just remove those. Um, how will those changes affect me? Well, aside from ruining the um, pigeons, ruining the um, ruining my uh, uh, um, green decks and forcing me to get rid of um, mistresses of shadows from all the decks, not much. I wasn't really using Darius, and I think it's a good choice. I wasn't really playing Order at all, so I didn't really mind the um, uh, um, Temple Guards being changed, although I don't think it really solves any problems with that card. Um, Darius is okay. Mistress sucks. I wasn't really playing the Slaves and or... Um, what was it called? Uh, forced labor at all. So is the thing. Okay. Um, in the different things, we talked about the um, veggie blockade briefly. Indeed, but that's all I really want to say about veggie blockade. Since all my ideas about Veggie Blockade were more or less mentioned in the in the forum topic, it's like I'm I'm really angry because of course cool stuff is happening when I'm away. Ah, uh, but whatever, I can't do anything about it. Um
What else? Yeah, as you can see, I have like a whole load of quests here. Um, well, they are not necessarily because I just came back and, and saw all of them here. Uh, the thing is, I was trying to play when I was away. Uh, but in short, the only computer I had access to was such a poor machine that Spellweaver was barely working there. So I gave up. I, I played like one game. I nearly timed out versus Easy AI and it's not because I was doing some crazy BS. It's because it took like 10 years to do each action. Yeah, that's that's the uh, that's the that's the hardware I had to deal with. So yeah, no, thank you. I I gave up. Although I had redeemed some of the quests, and I built a deck because one of the quests I had there was to play twelve friendly or ranked games with a nature hero. All oh, right, sorry, it was an AI game, but it was a friendly AI game, not the um, AI AI game game. So it was um, 40 minutes rather than... Um... How long is a regular quick battle? I mean, how long is a regular AI battle? I think it's twice 45 minutes, right? 90 minutes? One and a half hour? Something like this. Yeah, it's like, I think it's 45 minutes per player and in the... Um... In the friendlies and ranks, it's like 20 minutes per player, if I recall correctly. So I played one game. Yeah, it took me took me yeah nearly 20 minutes to to finish a game versus an AI on a deck that it's kind of it's kind of an aggro deck. Honestly, it's not a combo deck or anything like that. It kind of is. Well, anyway, it it shouldn't have taken that long if it wasn't for the game being slow AF. So I gave up. And with that said, we have these DN Vamp Elves, which I built just for the purpose of playing 12 friendly or ranked games with a nature hero. I was like, I will f I'll try to build a nature deck. And let me get over it quickly. So basically what this deck is, it's based on elves. So I was trying to make sure that every creature I use in this deck is indeed an elf. And I used the Vampirism boost to get those elves to insane attacks. And life bound for potential insane healing, should it be necessary. Uh, it's running the advanced Niva for the sake of her special ability that really benefits the Grove Guardians. So the idea is that I will play some Grove Guardians early on in the game. I will play some Vampirisms fairly early on in the game. I'll try to keep um, Grove Guardians and Vampirisms intact for as long as possible. Then when the time comes, I'm hitting the uh, Nevas ability I'm dropping a lot of cheap cards. Oh, I don't have any of the uh, Battle Brothers here. That's interesting why I decided to do so. Anyway, yeah, I'm using her ability when I already have a lot of mana from power surges and from, uh, you know, game taking a while. Uh, so I use her ability, I drop as much creatures as possible to gain even more creatures since all my creatures are elves. They benefit the Grove Guardians. The Grove Guardians are already getting some boosts from the Vampirism. So all in all, I ideally have like a couple of Grove Guardians dealing like, uh, you know, 10 damage each or something like that and winning me the game. Either by overhealing me or wrecking my opponent. This is the basic game plan. I have some Elf Commanders, Haldi Riders, Elf Warriors, Elven Sky Riders, Elf Scouts, all sort of things. Ideally, it would be like, you know, uh, using the Nivas ability, playing some cheap Elf Warriors, then following it up with some cheap Elf Scouts, so I can get the most out of the mana I have, boost those as far as possible. 
Haldiri Riders are for some swift, quick damage if I need it. Uh, I think I gave up on the Battle Brothers because they were slow. Uh, they are not called Battle Brothers, I am aware of it, but I don't recall their name. Brothers in Arms. Yeah, I gave up on them because they were slow. Other than keeping everything elf, I wanted everything to be swift. I mean, uh, fast. So, basically everything aside from the Grove Guardians themselves, who benefit from all the other elves, has three or more speed. Which makes it difficult for my opponent to block or attack those cards. I have some Mantles of Wind to uh, potentially flyify and speed up my Grove Guardians. This is like the main uh, reason for the Mantles. Because if I can take my Guardians back um, to the support line and still keep them usable, that's great. That's what Mantle allows me to do. I have some tests of time to destroy some abductious... Um, spells and or artifacts my opponents may have. I have some power surges and some vampirism. So basically the uh, the main idea was to take vampirism and make the vampire elves. Later on I realized that the blood-seeking mutant is a vampire not an elf. I was thinking that it's an elf. Apparently it is not. So that's why the uh, um, I thought it's a vampire elf, it's vampire mercenary. So that's why the um, the creatures look as they look right now. But then I realized, you know, if I'm going with, with the second aspect, I don't really want to put the second aspect just for one card only. This is where I decided to put power surges. I figured out that they work pretty nicely with the... Um, Advanced Niva's ability because you know she has to pay two Then she will pay at least three to get more creatures So that will be like five mana total to execute her ability in the best possible way Then I would like to play more like um, elf scouts maybe grove guardians if if that would be a case to boost my already um, present on board grove guardians Power Surge in here is even more intended to serve as an additional draws rather than um, rather than additional mana. Although additional mana is still pretty important. And in the end, I taken the Silver Blade Warriors first because they are elves. Second, because they are fast, and third, because they are also from the Dominion. So I can you know benefit from having the second aspect. From Shrines, I decided to take four Elven Sanctuaries, since I'm playing all Elves, the card that uh, boosts my attacks, Elf, attack and HP is great, because it will work on all of my creatures, it's not like I will play some creatures and I will have this ability, but at the same time I will have creatures, although I won't be able to use this ability, because no, none of my creatures are Elves, so I cannot really use it. That's, that is eliminated. And I have a couple of the uh, Cathedral of the Night, uh, just for the sake of the second ability, which is a weakness emblem on a creature gain to life, which is very, very beneficial. It kind of works with the vampirism and trying to overheal. It helps me stay alive if I'm doing BS rather than dropping my attacking creatures. All in all, it's a very, uh, very helpful card. I am pretty satisfied with this deck. As I said, I haven't played that much with it. I've played like a couple of games. One was this awful game that took forever because I was dealing with the uh, way too old hardware. And the second one was like yesterday. After I came back home, I uh, just went for one quick AI battle. We might go for one more quick AI battle today. Regarding the uh, mm -mm -mm, the nerfed uh, Mistress of Shadows, 
I only use a couple of mistresses in this deck, in the in the mono mono vampire. Mono Dominion Vampires. I'll rename it. Um, totems are mono red. Gobos are. Well, they are not mono red, they are red green. Mm. That helps. Uh, this is mono rage, this is mono souls, so this is uh, mono corruption. This is mono rage again. I mean, really playing mono rage is so good. Uh, Dark Souls, so this is the um, CD Corruption Dominion. Seductor is, I think, Mono Dominion. Yes, it is. These are the free for all decks that I'm too lazy to rename even further. This is the uh, never actually used Mono Artifacts deck. Don't like this deck. I could try and work on it. I'm not sure if I had found more renovation facilities. I think I might have acquired some... Um... Yeah, I have one more renovation facility. And... Have I? Yes, I have indeed acquired um, Steel Sentience. Only one so far, but it's always something. Choose an action card in your graveyard to play this turn. Play it again without playing its mana cost. <laughs> Sorry, artifacts, but you are going down. Red Souls, so this is a pretty weird deck I built a long time ago. Angelic Legions, Undead, undead Power, not, but Undead Hordes, Angelic Legions, Spectral Power, Goblin Assault, Elven Vengeance, and Vampiric Implants are the starter decks. So they are obviously monocolor and they don't use it. Vampire Overlord. Is not using any mistresses. Wrath of Shamans is monocolor. Yes, it is. So it's not using any of the mistresses. The Black Market Neva is the uh, poor experiment that I made a while ago. Um, that is uh, that relies on the black markets that I don't have. I'm not sure about this deck. I would love to try and play with it a little bit, although I don't really have a huge hopes for it. And Fear of Ground is a um, is another mock-up deck I made. I think I was making it. Um, I think I made it uh, at the time of making the uh, Vamp Elves because the uh, while making the Vampiric Elves, I kind of came up with the idea of a deck that will benefit from the powers of Vegetation Blockade and Earthquake. Two cards that punish the ground creatures and don't affect the flying creatures whatsoever. This is again the heavily fairy deck. As I said, I was investigating fairies, trying to make something out of it. Uh, yeah, it hurts my Moonlight Patrol a lot because they were like a huge card in this deck. Now they suck. So, yeah, in short, what was the idea with this deck? Once again, flying creatures. So I'm having Pegasi, I'm having the um, Griffin Riders, I'm having the Regiment, I'm having some flying fairies, a lot of flying fairies, the matter of fact is. Uh, I think I put all those fairies mostly because they were flying and I was really lacking flying creatures that could go into this deck. Um... Also the Elven Sky Rider because they were flying. Griffin Riders because they are overpowered and flying. Then I took some Arrow Burgess, keeping in mind that I was already going for um Actually Ah, sorry. With Pegasi and Pegasus regiments, I could play some land creatures and then just um, mount them on Pegasi and have flying creatures. That would be something. 
but aside from that, uh, the core cards of this deck were supposed to be the Veggie Blockade that force, forces, uh, well, both me and my opponent to pay for using the um, non-flying creatures. And the second card was the four Earthquakes that I don't have, this is why this deck is not viable. To distribute X damage among non-flying creatures, and that's why this deck used no non-flying creatures with everything flying. Put Pegasus under an allied non-flying creature. Oh, that's a good one. Use this power only outside combat during your turn. This effect lasts indefinitely. So I wonder if you were to uh, destroy the Pegasus that is under a creature that has been made flying. Will it remain flying? The logic says no. But the practice is that it will remain flying since... Um, that's how Car bugs out. Car, is this his name? Yeah, this is how Car bugs out. There is this part that this effect lasts indefinitely, so once you get the car boosted, no effects, no stuff like stupefying or, or, or a lot of other weird things work on him. Like, as far as I remember, even Para Evo cannot get rid of these effects. Yep, that, yeah, I think that's, that's what people had. The people were um, parallel evolutioning... Using parallel evolutions on upgraded car and the stats that upgraded car gets, which is plus 2 attack, plus 1 HP and flying, remained on the cars that were changed. So people had like um, flying snakes with plus 2, plus 1. Because logic. Because this effect lasts indefinitely. Now back to Fear of Ground. Um, yeah, actually, I, I, I really wasn't thinking about it. Uh, the second thing in this deck was the uh, Militian Citadel. The next level one creature you play this turn costs one less, and it was important because um, Griffin Riders, Pegasi, uh, Sunrise Fairies, and Elven Skyriders were the level one creatures I would love to uh, benefit from, from, that would love to benefit from the M Militian Citadel. The second ability was the Enhanced Spring that would allow me to return a creature I control to my owner, to my hand, to its owner's hand. Which will be largely used for uh, Moonlight Patrols to take them back and play them again with Restored Energy. Or potentially if some batch happens to any of my other cards. I think that would be a decent deck, although that never happened. So Earthquake would of course be getting rid of my opponent's land troops. The uh, Arrow Barrage was more intended to be as a sort of uh, removal to my opponent's flying troops. That would be immune to Earthquakes and Veggie Blockades. Yeah, pretty, pretty decent deck, I'd say. And I think we're hitting an hour-long video right now, um, so I should be coming to an end. So with that said, I will just jump into one more quick battle because I want to level up and that should happen. Because if I hop into a quick battle, you will see... Du -du -du -du. That's a poor sound effect, is it, Dragon? Pretty sick, eh? I'll gain a skill. And um, this thing right here is a... Huh. One Dominion level. I will DO you. Elven Sanctuary. I'll take it. That is a visual board mode. Courtesy of Ravinir, who created those and then was kind enough to post them free to download on the forums. 
I guess I'll leave the link um, to the um, topic to the forums topic in the video description. Hmm. Okay. For you to download, aside from this uh, beautiful blue, whatever it was called, academy. Uh, no, wait. Um, my bad. They are called wisdom. Beautiful wisdom themed uh, board. He made modifications available for all the other aspects. Like all the other aspect themes are available. Hm, another elven sanctuary. That's good, but I won't do that. I'll do something like that. I still need one more level for um, oh, for Niva's ability. If I were to pay two, one, two, mm, that's decent. I'll do it. Actually, I failed. I should not have done that. I will tell you why in a second. Because now I attack and Despina blocks with her bullshit um, Shadow Step Assassin. Yeah, but I realized it when it was already too late, so... Ouch. Oh look, another vampirism. Um... That's good enough. Um, we have a second vampirism. Yep, that's a good idea. Because with a second vampirism, they got plus one, they got plus one, and they got plus one. And I will be healing myself for a solid 11 HP right now if I am not mistaken. Pretty sick. Ouch, that'll hurt. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm impressed. Honestly, that was a really good play on um, on the Spina's end. Now, the best thing for me to do would be to drop two elves and win the game. Will I win by overhealing? No. I won by killing. Yeah, so I just wanted to tease this um, board mod. Now I have to admit, uh, when I saw when I saw this, I was pretty amazed. They look awesome. Wait, did not I get? Oh, I am further away from um, leveling up than I expected. They are pretty nice looking, and uh, I think I will change to something different though. I, I chose the blue one just just for the test. Um, I, I I have to I actually haven't seen the forums yet. If Ravi was kind enough to reply, because I think was it an album. I think an album was asking uh, for a tutorial to to making those. And uh, uh, um. 
And I agreed with him, and I asked um, Ravinir to t teach us. I don't know if he replied yet or not. I will have to check the forms. <laughs> that, that gives a lot of insight on when I'm recording this, but I'm okay with this, I don't mind. Uh, aside from that, I also wanted to say that... Um, oh, but basically I'm starting this, this about that we asked for a tutorial, because I was really trying to um, do some visual mods on my own. Yeah, that, that was supposed to be like a little funny project to make. Uh, yeah, that, that would make like for a one jokey episode. But the thing is that I started to uh, browse the, uh, the game files and I was like, crap, I have no idea how to deal with it. It turns out like textures are in something called .atf. And as far as I remember, I, I've been trying to, to deal with it for a while, but I wasn't able to find any solution to work with those things. Like, the best thing is that a solution found online didn't work. And then I had to had to gave up working on this for some reason. I think I, I, I just had to... Um, I just had to do some things that I had to do before I, I, I was leaving, and, and, and then I left. So when I was away, I was of course not doing it. So I'm mostly hoping that Ravi will drop an idea of a uh, software that will help work with the um, with the texture files. Then I think I I have one great idea for the board mod that I will definitely do. And aside from that, I. I had this had this jokey idea that I don't want to spoil too much. That I will probably try to bring to life as well. Oh, and on a related note, I think I forgot to say this. Because we're at the end of August. And yeah, it's, it's not September for me yet. And neither it should be for you if you are watching this on the day. This video was uploaded. I am kind of thinking about making the um, August, uh, the September, a rating race month. And what I mean by that, I would love to try and probably um, focus more on ranked play and try to get to some decent rating race position. To some extent, see how far could I get. Uh, some feedback on that would be nice. If you are interested in that one or not. Uh, yeah, if, if the feedback on that part is swift enough. Shouldn't be really too difficult to make. Because even even if... Uh, I'm, 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 I'm uploading this video on 31st. So it's still August. Oh, new quest. Hello. Then I will have like even if you would like reply on on the first, on the second, on the third. Yeah, it's like ninety nine percent. I won't be recording anything on those days. Well, it's a good idea. So it's a good chance I will be totally drunk somewhere around third or second. Um, um, um sorry. What what did I say? No, no. I I I said nothing. Whatever you said, I did not say that. Whatever you heard, I did not say that. Yeah, nothing. I definitely said nothing. Um, <clears throat> anyway, yeah, with that all of the way, all I have to do is create some catchy title for that video and we'll be good. Wink, wink. Now I have no idea for it. This is, this is like the worst part ever. Coming up with titles for the videos. Oh, God. Anyway, um, that will be it for today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did like, subscribe, share the video. Remember to hit the freaking uh, bell next to the subscribe button if you are already subscribed to get notified about whatever YouTube is notifying you about. Yeah. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed. I am really waiting for your feedback because in this video I called for a hell load of feedback 
and I'll see you next week. Take care.